Good morning and welcome to Morning Scoop for Saturday, December 5th. This is your Daily Buckeye Fix. I'm Tom Moore. The game against Michigan in 357 days. Today is Conference Championship Saturday, and for the first time since 2016, it is a day off for the Buckeyes. Michigan and Iowa will play tonight at 8 on Fox for the Big Ten Championship. That game will likely be the one that determines where Ohio State goes for its bowl game. There is still a very small outside chance that they might sneak into the playoff, but the Buckeyes will likely be headed to the Rose Bowl if Michigan wins and to the Fiesta or Peach Bowls if the Hawkeyes win. But while we wait to sort all of that out, I wanted to talk about something interesting that Tony Gerdeman wrote this week at Buckeyescoop.com. It is his weekly column, What I Know, What I Think, What I Wonder, and it touched on a number of interesting items on a variety of topics. Wanted to have him on to talk about some of those. So, Tony, thanks for joining me. Uh, Thank you, Tom. You mentioned that we won't be at the Big Ten Championship game, and I just remembered I'm going to have to have to get my own halftime cookies here at home, (laughs) which is a it's a tradition at the Big Ten Championship game. They bring out some sweet treats at halftime, and so I'm going to have to do that on my own like a sucker. Well, you'll be in my prayers. Uh, The first thing I I wanted to touch on uh, outside of cookies, the first thing I did want to touch on was kind of a more of a big picture thing. And this has been a really weird college season by a lot of metrics. You know, there've been more upsets of top teams than normal. It is entirely possible that four of the five teams that, I mean, pretty much everyone had penciled into the playoff, Clemson, Oklahoma, Ohio State, and maybe even potentially Alabama, would all miss out on the playoff this season. I've kind of wondered all season if the return of super seniors after the, you know, the guys who got the extra COVID bonus year may have helped balance out the talent in the sport a little bit this season. So I was interested in your thoughts on that. And if if you thought that was something that could potentially continue to be the the, uh, case in future seasons as well. Yeah. I think when you look at like, why, why is this year as crazy as it is, there, there are a number of factors. I think COVID continues to have an impact from last year, but the influx of, just more experienced players definitely evens the playing field. I think you've got 22 year olds playing against 19 year olds and they may not be as talented, but they're smarter and they are, they've seen it all before. So they're better prepared for it. They're able to handle it and they, they just make teams better. They round them out more. And you, you look around the nation, like even Oklahoma state, they have two six year seniors in their defense. And you, you got to think that that's been a factor for them. And you see it all over the country where they're just, they, they, they've they shored up some weak spots or spots that would have gone to younger guys where you know, coaches are very happy to get these guys to come back because they know behind them, it's probably not as good. So that's the good side of it. The bad side of it is as just in the example I used was Marcus Williamson coming back for Ohio state. And not that he has played poorly this year because he hasn't, but the impact for next year would Ohio state, I think Ohio state would have been better off next year if Cameron Martinez is getting all of those snaps, but it may not have done them any good this year. And that's what the focus is. So even these 60 year seniors who go, there's still going to be an impact next year. And then also next year, there will also be, super seniors or 60 year guys because they have it's going to be doing this for the next four years or so where all of these all of these guys have that extra year and so i i wonder how much it will continue to shake up the college football world and we continue to see odd playoff pairings like this and you see oklahoma state in the mix or you know, michigan even though not necessarily through all of the, the super seniors but there are impacts throughout the season that don't show up in the playoffs or may show up in the regular season where a team that would normally be in the playoffs kind of gets hindered by playing a team that has more experience than they normally would have. And then you also, you also wonder as I was talking about the downside of super seniors, look at, look at Thayer Munford coming back for Ohio state. And again, fantastic player. But has that been a, overall a help or a hindrance to the Ohio State offensive line, which never, I mean, it has been good, but did it get better as the season went on? I would say no, and that's exactly what you need from the offensive line. They kept moving parts around because they could and they were able. And you wonder if that luxury kept them from really becoming what they what the potential was there for them to do. So I think it depends on how you use it. and. 
uh, you're not going to turn it down, but you just got to use it right. I think. Yeah, it, it definitely just threw off, you know, the normal rhythm of a college football program where you, you know, you have the guys who come in and you, you have a certain schedule where you expect to be on the field. And then all of a sudden, well, Chris Olave came back and he was not a super senior. He was just, he was someone who came back and well, because Chris Olave came back, Jamison Williams was expected to be that guy. So then he, Jamison Williams transfers to Alabama and you, you see these examples all over the place. So yeah, it is, you know, not, not necessarily a good thing or a bad thing, just a different thing this year and will probably, probably continue to be a different thing uh, for several years to come. Uh, another different thing this week, uh, something that really kind of shook up the sport a little bit was the departure of Brian Kelly from Notre Dame to LSU. Uh, he did develop a fantastic new accent, which good for him. Uh, and also good for Marcus Freeman taking over as the head coach of the Irish. You had some really interesting information in that column this week about a conversation you had about Freeman like five years ago. So tell people about that. Yeah, this was back in the 2016 Big Ten Championship game when uh, Freeman was the linebackers coach for Purdue. I'm not sure if he was still the linebackers coach for Purdue at that point or he had already gone to, I guess he still would have been at Purdue at that point. But I asked uh, Juwan Bentley about him, uh, linebacker for Purdue, Juwan Bentley about Marcus Freeman. I also talked to Daryl Hazel, the head coach then, because I was going to write a story. Yeah, at that point, he was the linebackers coach and co-defensive coordinator for Purdue. So, you know, obviously, you're looking for stuff to write about when you go to the Big Ten media days that isn't just Ohio State-centric. So wanted to write about Marcus Freeman. I never actually got the story written. But to just hear the way Bentley talked about Marcus Freeman – uh, was everything that I'd ever heard from any Ohio State linebackers in the past talking about Luke Fickle. And so that was always interesting to me because just the way he made them uncomfortable and even going back to um, two years earlier or a year earlier that year, you know, Raquan McMillan talking about how you're not allowed, not allowed to um, be comfortable or say the word comfort around Luke Fickle. The similar things with Marcus Freeman where he would do just the one workout. They, he took the, the defense, took the linebackers to go work out with the Navy SEALs and just give them something new and fresh here and there and would always keep them on their toes and challenge them and really a, a player's coach, as you saw from the, the, the Notre Dame tweets on Friday of his introduction. Uh, but then also talking with Daryl Hazel about the future of Marcus Freeman and you no, know, I asked him, did you know, did you see a coach when he was a player? And he said, no, because you don't look at players necessarily like that. You look at them as players. It was when he came back and was doing some grad work where you're, you see them, what they can be. And he said he's a really hard worker. He attacks it. And he has, you know, said he would be, he's a, he's a rising star in the industry and a certain head, a future head coach. And to think that you go from linebackers coach at Purdue to the head coach at Notre Dame in five years is quite a trajectory. And like I wrote on Friday, maybe they weren't, maybe Notre Dame wasn't quite sure he's ready right now. They thought maybe he'd be ready in a year or two, but they didn't want to lose him over the possibility like, well, maybe he's not quite ready yet. We think he will be. You look at, uh, and I compared it to Clemson hiring Dabo Sweeney or Northwestern going and keeping Pat Fitzgerald, like the fear of losing these guys, knowing that they could probably handle it, certainly could handle it in a couple of years, but why not just do it now, make it seamless and just continue to build and ride the wave. And because it's not like Notre Dame needs to be rebuilt and you saw how happy the players were. Now I think hiring somebody because the players want them is the last thing you should do. Like you need to hire the best guy. And uh, we'll see if they got that with Freeman, but clearly they didn't want to lose him. Yeah, it's pretty, you know, I, I have pretty much gotten out of the coach hire grading business because it's just, you know, you they, there have been a bunch that I thought, oh, this is going to be a home run and it just didn't work out at all. And a bunch where it was like, why would you do that? And it's worked out kind of just fine. So, yeah, I, I uh, once once Scott Frost at Nebraska hasn't really worked out, it's like, boy, I. <laughs> If the uh, guy who just went undefeated to UCF going back to his home state in the traditional power and like if he can't get them back on like, all right, I'm, I'm going to get out of this business. But yeah, I mean, Freeman, Freeman seems like he has tremendous upside for sure. And, you know, sure, there's downside. There's no such thing as a sure thing. But yeah, that, that is that is definitely one to watch for sure. Uh, you know, you had some other stuff in there beyond just the sort of national college football implications of things. Also, the you know, on the Ohio State front. 
you, you wrote about their newest quarterback commit, Devin Brown. So you watched, you know, you have not scouted him in person, but you you did get to watch, a, you know, a, a bunch of video of him. What did you think of him just on film? And why do you think it was important for them to add a quarterback to this 2022 class? Yeah, I mean, you look at him on film, you can see why he's a top five quarterback in the class. He's he's you know, six three, plays tall, but he's he's athletic and run the read option, which should excite Ohio State fans. He can run the ball and he can he, he's he's shifty for his size. Like I said, he's like six three, two fifteen or something like that, but he can move and really really strong arm, quick uh, release and. Uh, it, fits in exactly with what Ohio state would like to do offensively. And I think the reason that it's important is because you need to sign a quarterback every year because you're probably losing one or two every year. And that's either to the NFL or to the transfer portal. I don't know if we are going to see any year moving forward where Ohio state doesn't, doesn't lose somebody either to the NFL or the transfer portal. They've already lost Jack Miller. Who knows what else is going to happen? But if you're losing, you need to replenish, and you need to do that every year because there'll probably be some years where you lose two guys, and we've seen that happen before. And so, you just you grab one every year. Uh, there's you, know, you think there's some danger, and you keep grabbing the best instead of maybe settling for somebody who would just stick around and be happy to be a Buckeye. But you figure if you're if you are okay, or if you're good enough to go get guys like Devin Brown, who they just it's not like it's been a long recruitment there. So, and so same with Justin Fields, like Dave believes that when, when, when it's time to go get somebody, they can go get them and get involved. And then, you know, it doesn't have to be this long courtship. It's an effective courtship and quarterbacks want to play at Ohio state. And then even if uh, they don't necessarily get somebody through recruiting, there's going to be somebody coming through the transfer portal, but you get a guy like Devin Brown who sees the Ohio State quarterback room and wants to be a part of it. And so you like that competitive nature. You just wonder how long does that competitive nature give, you know, stick around in terms of like, yeah, I, I like the competition, but I also want to play. Mm-hmm. And, you know, does, how long does it take before he goes somewhere else and plays? Not the Devin Brown, just in general. And that's why, you know, even, even with putting guys in the NFL, I don't know that they think they can plan on ever having a guy for more than three years. Like the average is probably between two and a half and three years based on three years and out, or maybe you you keep a guy for a fourth year. Sometimes guys won't ever get to a third year because they've already transferred. So you can't really expect to have a guy for four years. So I don't, I don't know when they will. Yeah. I mean, Jack Miller just left after two years and, and, you know, he was someone who, when he, when they, you know, uh, when he committed, he was that was a very big deal. He was one of the top quarterbacks in the in the nation, and then they ended up adding a second quarterback to that class. And yeah, I, I don't know that I would necessarily put money on any particular one of Stroud slash McCord slash yours slash Brown being the one who transfers out. But you know, the odds that all four of them spend four years at Ohio State and all graduate with a degree from Ohio State and no one transfers, like I, the odds of that are relatively low. But yeah, having having another guy in the 2022 class with you or scooting up a year, that definitely helps because you just you got to keep re- refreshing that room, replenishing that room. And you know the good news for Ohio State fans is Ryan Day doesn't seem to have much uh, much difficulty replenishing that room, keeping that room stocked, even as guys sort of come in and out. It seems like the uh, the cupboard is always relatively relatively full there with Ryan Day. So that's uh, that's good news because that's going to be a challenge I think for a lot of programs moving forward. You know, when Brown does show up at Ohio State next year, he's going to be throwing to a very different group of wide receivers. Uh, we're still kind of making some assumptions here, but Chris Olave and Garrett Wilson will likely be off to the NFL. They could both theoretically be back, but very likely going to be off to the NFL. There will be a few new faces in that wide receiver room as well. You very bravely took a crack at breaking down where you thought everyone was going to fit in at receiver next year. I saw that and I thought, oh, good. I'm not nearly willing to put in the... Uh, putting the time to try and guess where, where these guys slot in and who fits where. So uh, why don't you, why don't you uh, share with us uh, how you sort of see those wide receiver roles shaking out next year? I'd rather not. <laughs> no. uh, Cause even as, as I wrote this, like if, if Brian Hartline sees us, he's just going to shake his head and be like, I don't even know how, wh- who are you to try to put this out there? And it's like, well, that's kind of the job. Just, you know, 
how about this? And not knowing if it's going to be the exact, you know, correct depth chart. Cause I am making some assumptions. Like one huge assumption is does Jackson Smith and Jigba stay in the slot or do they move him outside so that a Mecca Buka can then eat in the slot? And the, the, you know, does, does Julian Fleming move to X and help replace Garrett Wilson or does he stay at the Z where maybe there's more, depth and but then at z is is it jackson smith and jigba or is it a mecca buka jackson smith and jigba can play any of the three spots which really makes this difficult tom and then you bring in four receivers all of whom are between five ten and like six foot and a half and you got like caleb burton can play anywhere and he's 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 along the lines of garrett wilson jackson smith and jigba to me that you can put them anywhere and they'll be successful. Caleb Brown is like a 5'10 guy, so you figure he's going to be in the slot. Kojo Antwi is a stronger, um, but still six foot. Is he your six foot X like a Garrett Wilson? Maybe. Um, and Keon Gray's to me has always looked like Chris Olave, so I put him as Z. So, Tom, this is what I had. And I have, I don't, I don't even know if I would have the same thing tomorrow. And the only reason I know this is what I have is because I'm reading it right now. So I have Julian Fleming and Marvin Harrison and Kojo Antwi at X. Z's would be Emeka Igbuka, Jaden Ballard, Ballard, and Keon Grays. I think Ballard and Grays are probably correct. And, and then at the, in the slot, I have Jackson Smith and Jigba, Caleb Burton, and Caleb Brown. And really, Caleb Burton will, will probably, I, I figure he might be, he might be the number five guy or maybe Keon Gray's might be the number five guy. And then the other thing is Keon Gray spent all summer in seven on sevens working in the slot. So like, I, I think you're going to see so much movement that, you know, I don't even know if there's an X, a Z and an H. I think it's just all WR, WR, WR. <laughs> and uh, so I guess in that way, I can't possibly be wrong. There you go. Yeah. If you're, if you're, uh, if you're wrong later, just say, well, you, I was right when I wrote it. And then they, you know, they made things change. This is how these things work. Yeah. It, it is going to be fascinating to watch, you know, that there's going to be a lot to watch during spring ball next year, but you know, where, where some of those guys slot in, you know, how they, how they shift guys around, you know, what, what do they want to do? I mean, it feels like, yeah. What, what do they want to do with Jackson Smith and Jigba is kind of question number one. And then you kind of go from there. Cause you know who your number one is next year. And then from there, okay. You've got some other options, so that'll uh, that'll be a lot of fun. And uh, something else that'll be a lot of fun, we are planning to do a live show later tonight, kind of towards the end of the Big Ten Championship game, maybe fourth quarter, give or take, to recap what should be a fun day of football and also look ahead at what it will mean for the college football playoff, New Year's Six Bowls, and specifically to Ohio State. So we will uh, have that a little later on tonight on uh, YouTube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. Think of it as our uh, Ohio State or uh, Buckeye Weekly Live post game show. It will just not be a Buckeye game that we, we are doing a post game show for tonight, but there should still be plenty to talk about between uh, all the other games, the uh, Pac 12 game, you know, that on Friday night, all that stuff, all going to impact sort of what happens with the Buckeyes and who the Buckeyes are going to be playing uh, during bowl season. So that'll be a lot of fun. You can, and then we will also have another live show mid afternoon on Sunday once all the ball assignments are out. Plan on 2.30 ish on Sunday is probably a decent ballpark on a time. We'll have that on uh, as well, doing a kind of a live recap of college football playoff, where the Buckeyes are headed, who they're playing, how that matchup looks, all that good stuff. All of that's going to be at youtube.com slash Buckeye Scoop. So the best thing to do is if you are watching on YouTube, hit that bell, subscribe to the channel, get notified as soon as we go live so that you never miss a show. But we'll also have, uh, we'll also have uh, those as podcasts as well. Those will be Buckeye Weekly podcasts. You can find those on whatever podcast platform you're listening to this on. Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud, Spreaker, Spotify, whatever. Just uh, subscribe to Buckeye Weekly and you will find all of those there as well. So that'll do it for today. Thank you guys all for joining us. Enjoy the football. We are running out of football Saturdays for the year. So make sure you enjoy this one with or without the Buckeyes. And we will talk to you tomorrow.